Dear students, today we will talk about spherical polar coordinates. So you have already learned about plane polar coordinates. Today we are going to learn about spherical polar coordinates. This is for those systems, for those objects which cannot be fitted in a plane but in a three-dimensional space involving angular motions. For example, a motion along the surface of a sphere. So three coordinates will be involved and those coordinates are r, theta and phi. Obviously, r and theta mean the same thing what they meant in plane polar coordinate. You will have to learn today about a third parameter, a third coordinate and that is phi. So, let us define each of them one by one. If this is the coordinate system, so I will label this axis as x, this as y and this as z. And remember students, I have not done anything randomly at the moment. It is a very deliberate attempt that I choose this axis as x, this as y and this as z. Remember, whenever we move in a plane, in a field, on the earth, we choose, we call that as a planar moment. That can be defined in a plane. And that plane is always defined by x and y. But whenever the objects move up, say for example, when we send rockets in the cosmos, when we send planes, right, we always define a vertical parameter, a height. And that height is always defined by z, right? It is by convention only and there is no other special reason. Now, suppose r is the position vector of the particle that we are interested in, the particle that is moving on the surface of a sphere. Now, suppose this r vector makes an angle theta with the vertical. Then, obviously, the component that it makes with z is how much? r cos theta. All of us understand that. Now, the component that it makes that it uh, makes with the other axis is r sin theta. But because we understand that not only y is perpendicular to z, the entire y-x plane is actually perpendicular to z. So, we can also choose that vector in this way, r sin theta. Remember, this is perpendicular to this, right? The way y is perpendicular, x is perpendicular, x, y is also perpendicular to z. Therefore, if the component of r along z is r cos theta, its r sin theta component can be shown conveniently in the xy plane and not just along y, right? Now, this component r sin theta makes an angle phi with the x-axis. Now, theta is called as, is called as zenith angle. Zenith angle or it is also called as co-latitude. See, this r vector, you can say that this z axis stretches like this, the plus z part and the minus z part. So, this r vector makes an angle 0 and it can turn at best to 180, right? So, value of theta ranges from 0 to pi. This way, 0 with the z and then it can turn. So, the maximum value is pi. Now, what about phi? Phi is the plane. How do we define this angle phi? So, see, you can draw a vertical plane. This is the plane which contains this r vector. And this plane is making certain angle with another plane and that is xz plane. So, phi is called azimutal angle as a mutual angle. It is the angle which the vertical plane, vertical plane or as a mutual plane makes with, makes with xz plane, xz plane. This plane which contains the r vector, it subtends an angle phi with another plane that is xz plane. And this angle is called phi. It is called the azimutal angle. Now, we have to see what shall the value of phi range from. It can range from 0 to 2 pi. Now, how do you understand that? See, uh, let us take the example of this cardboard. I have a cardboard in front of me, right? Imagine this is uh, one of the axes, one of the planes, and this is another plane. They are at an angle 90 at the moment, right? An xz plane at a, and a vertical plane. 
right so what can be the angle between them it can be either zero it can be zero right it is zero and i can fold them the other way around it is 2 pi it is 2 pi right so either it is zero when the planes are together remember either it is zero when the planes are together and when i fold them one complete rotation it is how much 2 pi so the angle is 0 to 2 pi between any two planes it is 0 to 2 pi now let us find obviously we know that position vector r will be given by xi plus yj plus zk so let's find the value of x y and z in terms of spherical coordinates right now what shall be the component of this vector r sin theta along x and y along x it makes an angle phi so x component will be r sin theta cos phi r sin theta is the value of the vector itself in the x y plane and since it subtends an angle phi with the x axis we know that the component along x will be r sin theta cos phi and the component along y will be r sin theta sin phi and what is z z we have already defined that it is r cos theta now we can square and add them up now x square plus y square plus z square is how much is r square sin square theta right that will be common sin square phi and cos square phi will be one and you are left with r square cos square theta and again when you add them up it is equal to r square so x square plus y square plus z square is equal to r square right now if you just divide y by x y by x r sin theta and sin theta will go you are left with sin phi by cos phi that is tan phi so phi is how much tan inverse of y by x so this gives the direction of the vector along phi tan inverse of y by x right now let us see what is uh, tan of theta because we have seen tan of phi that will be obviously r sin theta by r cos theta right so that will be tan of theta but let us find the value of sin theta r sin theta and r cos theta so if you add up if you add up x square plus y square only how much is x square plus y square that is r square sin square theta will be common and this and this will sum up to 1. So, x square plus y square is actually r square sin square theta. So, actually r sin theta is x square plus y square <coughs> under root. Right? Now, we say that we are dividing the same r sin theta with r cos theta. And that gives us tan theta. And that tan theta is how much? How much is r sin theta? We have found it. It is x square plus y square under root. And how much is r cos theta? We know it's z. r cos theta is z. So it is z. So theta is obviously tan inverse of x square plus y square divided by z. So we have found the value of x, y, z, tan theta, tan phi, theta and phi. And they are the essential components of spherical polar coordinates. Now, next we may be interested in finding what are the values of unit vectors along R, that is R0, R this uh, cap. What is the value of unit vector along theta, that is theta cap. And what is the value of unit vector along phi, that is phi cap. So, let us try to find those unit vectors. So, we know that again our vector is uh, xi plus yj plus zk now let us substitute the value what we have obtained it is r sin theta cos phi i we have found the value of x right it is r sin theta cos phi what is y it is r sin theta sin phi j and what is z it is simply r cos theta k now, if you are interested in finding R cap, so this R can be written as R R cap. So, R cap will be obtained by dividing this throughout by R, magnitude of R. 
सो साइन थीटा कॉस फाइ आई प्लस साइन थीटा साइन फाइ जे प्लस कॉस थीटा के दिस इज द वैल्यू ऑफ यूनिट वेक्टर अलोंग आर राइट इन टर्म्स ऑफ आई जे एंड के नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू फाइंड व्हाट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ थीटा कैप सो इफ ऑल ऑफ यू रिकॉल what we had done in the plane polar coordinate system since this was the r vector the vector pointing in its direction was r cap theta cap was in this direction it, and it was perpendicular to r r all of you know that now see our aim is not only to learn different topics but we should also be able to learn different approaches to solve a common problem right if i ask you to recall what we did in the plane polar coordinate system when we intended to find theta cap what was the approach the pro approach was that we chose two points and define two vectors for them then the resultant vector between them was pointing in the direction of increasing theta so we found this vector by subtracting this from this we can use a similar approach over here but it is better to solve the same problem but by an alternative approach right and a simpler approach so that alternative approach is that this theta cap is already it is perpendicular to r cap therefore this theta cap will lead will lead r cap by pi by 2 by 90 degree right therefore wherever theta is involved in the r cap will replace theta by theta plus pi by 2 that's the simple approach another approach right so theta cap will be it will be sin of theta plus pi by 2 cos phi will remain as such we are modifying this expression by using the concept that the vector the unit vector theta cap will be leading r cap by an angle of 90 degree because we know that r theta and phi are mutually perpendicular to each other right so we are modifying this expression by writing theta plus pi by 2 instead of theta so plus sin of again theta plus pi by 2 cos phi is the sin phi will remain as such j plus what is cos theta in a stead you will write cos theta plus pi by 2 k so theta cap will be we know that sin of 90 plus theta is cos theta so this will be cos theta cos phi i plus cos theta sin phi j and cos of 90 plus theta is minus sin theta minus sin theta k so this is the value of theta cap in terms of i j and k we we shall use the similar concept for phi now phi lies in another plane it lies in this plane and we know that phi it leads theta cap by pi by 2 so phi vector leads theta cap by pi by 2 now we had chosen this vector as if you recall the previous diagram this was r sin theta for r sin theta for the sake of simplicity we may write that this is equal to a vector say rho right now this because we are not interested in theta at the moment we are interested in phi therefore we don't want to complicate the expression by writing r sin theta r sin theta again we will simply put this r sin theta equal to some vector rho p q anything right so we have chosen rho now this rho has two components it is rho cos phi and rho sin phi so we can define this vector rho as rho cos phi i plus rho cos sin phi j right so this rho can again be defined as rho rho cap so this is rho cos phi i plus rho sin phi j if we want to define this rho vector rho cap this will be cos phi i plus sin phi j now we know that this phi vector it leads this rho vector by how much 90 see this r sin theta i told you this is the horizontal component of this r along x axis along y axis right 
so it can be here and then it can rotate in this plane like this this vector r sin theta can rotate in the plane between y and x so this phi obviously this angle phi is leading this rho vector by how much by 90 by pi by 2 therefore the from here we'll move to here this phi cap is leading this rho vector by how much by 90 therefore this phi cap can be written as the same thing but we'll change phi to phi plus pi by 2 so this will be cos of phi plus pi by 2 right i plus sine phi plus pi by 2 j now what is cos of 90 plus some angle it is minus sine phi i plus what is this this is cos of phi j and this is the value of phi cap again i am repeating that alternatively we can use the same approach what we used in case of plane polar coordinates we chose any two points and then we defined the vectors along these two points and then we found the resultant along this by subtracting this from this this angle was theta this was theta plus d theta similarly for phi we can again choose two points for one of the points the angle will be phi for another point it will be phi plus d phi then we'll use the same approach what we did there and we will arrive at the same result but better is to use alternative approaches different different approaches to learn a same problem that also adds to our knowledge right so this is how we have defined the vectors r theta and phi so this is uh, the preliminary discussion about spherical polar coordinates in the subsequent video i shall be teaching you about the velocity and acceleration components in spherical polar coordinates so I hope that gives you some basic idea.